Hello and welcome to PodNet, Pool Output Distillation for Small Task Incremental Learning. This paper is a result between the startup Eurotech, Sorbonne University, and University of Campinas. First of all, let's explain our particular setting. In incremental set learning, we learn multiple tasks. Each new task is made of new classes. After each task, we evaluate our model on all seen classes. Our metric is called the average incremental accuracy. It is the average of other accuracies computed after each task. Therefore, our model cannot simply be good at the last task. It must be good after each task. Moreover, we cannot simply reuse all previous task data. It would be too easy. We only use a very limited amount. In our case, it's only 20 images per class. Our major problem is catastrophic forgetting. We are able to learn new classes but we forgot all about the previous classes. This is mainly due to a strong data imbalance. New classes can have a hundred of images, while old classes only a few. This forgetting is particularly important when learning a lot of consecutive tasks. A naive solution is to avoid changing the model by freezing all or parts of its parameters. This increases the rigidity. We don't forget previous knowledge. However, it also impairs the plasticity which measures how much our model is able to learn new knowledge. Those two quantities must be balanced carefully, as we cannot favorize only one. Remember that we are evaluated on all seen classes, both old and new. Let's see the major trends existing to solve catastrophic forgetting. Instead of learning a single network for all tasks, we can learn one network per task. There is no need to have an actual several networks but we can use a subset of our networks, as shown on the picture. This is related to the lottery ticket hypothesis. A caveat of this approach is that most method requires task ID inference. Thanks to it, we are able to select the right subnetwork. To reduce catastrophic forgetting, we can also replay the previous class data in a rehearsal learning setting. We can either store a few images per class or we can generate the previous distribution with a GAN. Finally, many methods try to reduce the distance between the previous and current model in a distillation scheme. By doing so, we reduce the forgetting. This distillation, this constraint, can be defined in many ways and can be applied to weights, gradients, or even network outputs. In our case, we reuse a bit of the previous classes data in a rehearsal learning scheme. We also distill the knowledge of the previous network with the current network by constraining on network outputs. Finally, we also propose an architectural change to the classifier. First, we will see the novel classifier. Second, we will detail our distillation loss. And finally, we will showcase our result. Let's see our LAC, local similarity classifier. Our classifier is based on the cosine, classic, cosine classifier. The cosine classifier is a dot product between the features and the weights, where both are L2 normalized. The cosine classifier reduces forgetting by enforcing an identical magnitude on all class weights, both those associated to all classes and those associated to new classes. Each centroid is in the same latent space as the features, and each centroid represent the class majority mode. During the incremental learning, the dataset distribution changes greatly. In this situation, the majority modes become poor centroids as they cannot represent correctly the change in class embeddings. We propose to use multiple modes per class. This results in a classifier that is much more robust to distribution change. In practice, we will set for all experiments and all datasets the number of modes per class to 10. We found that using multiple modes per class increased performance. This performance was not simply due to better overall accuracy, but rather to reduce forgetting. New classes aren't learned necessarily better, but old classes do not forget catastrophically. Because our model is much more robust to the description change, uh, the old class embedding can change a lot uh, with few forgetting. But pool output distillation. Knowledge distillation enforces the probabilities of the new model to be close to the probabilities of the old model. Later, 
let's forget, showed better results by constraining the flat embedding before the classifier. It maximized the cosinic similarity between both the old and new embeddings. Our loss pod is applied on all over the CovNet intermediary outputs. In practice, we use it after each ResNet block. Naively, we can constrain the feature of both models to be closed. However, it has two drawbacks. First, it produces C times W times H constraint, making our model too rigid. Every pixel must be constant. Second, if the model produces a pixel outlier, our current model will be affected, and probably in a bad way. Third, we don't exploit the spatial dimension, which could be an improvement. We evaluated, um, we do not enforce spatial features to be identical, but rather to keep similar spatial statistics, allowing us to balance rigidity with plasticity. Instead of constraining every pixel, we extract statistics from the feeder maps. We found empirically the best statistics were alongside the pixel distribution, uh, alongside the horizontal and vertical axis. We evaluated our loss with different kinds of statistics. Constraining on statistics rather than pixel gave better results in all classes. Let's see the result. For all data sets, we learn half the classes, then incrementally add more classes. For CIFAR 100, this means that our first task is made of 50 classes. Then the remaining 50 classes are learned in a different amount of tasks. Previous state of the art learned at most 10 tasks, each made of five new classes. We show that learning more classes made of less classes is more challenging. On the left figure, we learn 50 tasks of one class each. Our model forget catastrophically. They lose up to 30 points of accuracy in the first five tasks. On the other hand, our model, PodNet, forgets very little. Our model is also able to scale to larger datasets like ImageNet 100 and ImageNet 1000 and still outperform previous results by a large margin. We perform in the paper extensive ablations confirming the robustness of our model. In this table, we compare the models when changing the amount of rehearsal memory. It is the number of images kept for each old classes. We try from five images to 200 images. With 200 images per old class, our model is comparable to BIC. But as long as we keep uh, less and less uh, images, we see that all results start to fall down. With only five images per old class, our result is much, much higher than previous results. Uh, we outperform uh, the previous state of the art, you see, by up to 26 points. Our contribution is a local similarity classifier and a novel dissection loss called POD. They allow us to outperform previous state of the arts on multiple data sets by a large margin, especially in the challenging setting of many small tasks. Our code is available on GitHub. You will find every uh, config file necessary to run and to reproduce the exact same results. Thank you for watching.